Hello pilots and welcome back to Motion RC Live episode 33 for yes, I can't believe we're doing this again uh, for another product reveal. So this time we went very, uh, very cheeky on it. We just threw up announcement so it could be anything and we enjoyed watching everybody, uh, you know, make your guesses. We're joined today by senior manager, as always, the guy behind the, the scenes here. Alpha, you with us? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Alpha's with us. He's been hanging out with you guys in the chat. Got a new monitor above so I can see all the comments now right above me. So again, thank you guys, everybody, for joining us. And we're going to get, I think, right to it, Alpha. Do you want to say any last parting words before we reveal the uh, the Batwing? I mean... <laughs> the, the, the Batwing? Yeah, for Project Jaws. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about the Batwing. <laughs> This is, uh, thanks everyone for being here. We hope you're all happy, safe, and healthy. And um, yeah, it's been a couple weeks since the MiG-29. We wanted to thank everyone for your support and just outpouring of engagement we've seen on a lot of platforms. Thank you guys for um, just sticking with us. So in our, in our mantra of something for everyone, it's been over five years since we've made something in this category. So I think for those of you who've patiently waited, there you go. Ooh, that's another. People are really going to get eat over that. Yes, I see everybody in the comments. But, Alex, are you ready, sir? Let's do it. Here we go. Let's hit it. you go we tried to throw off the scent because no way they release two free wing jets you know kind of uh back to back but it's here i'm actually shocked myself i only received this thing on tuesday um so we did the unboxing which we'll show you we did the assembly i've not gotten a chance to get out with it yet other than for some pictures that uh you will see as well and um guys i'm watching the comments going nuts uh i can't i can't wait to fly it. I'm so excited to have the, well, you would say Jaws, I say Yas 39, gripping before me, a canarded, fully functioning canarded Delta. Um, I'm super stoked with a lot of awesome features that we're going to get into. And now you see the chat, uh, the sidebar reveals everything we're going to do uh, today on the live show. So we're going to run through the features list quick. We're going to do a quick size contrast. I got a few of uh, similar aircraft in Free Wings lineup to show you. We'll go through the spec. Then we're going to go through uh, the unboxing and assembly quicker than we did on the MiG. We're not going to try to go through the entirety of it because we'll have that video next week for you. Um, you know, fully edited. Then we'll go through some liveries and schemes, how we ended up, you know, with this one and things that potentially, you know, we know our customers love to customize. So if it's your first time joining Motion RC on YouTube, you know, our customer base loves taking these models and going nuts. Then we will open up the question and answer because as you know, Alpha, the senior manager, guy behind the designs of these things, he's here with us. So you can ask him uh, as many questions as you want, all the stuff that maybe we don't touch on in the top. And then at the end, uh, what we did with the MiG that people really enjoyed, and it's something Alpha's been doing on his own Twitch 
streams uh, Friday nights, randomly on Tuesday nights. Um, but he's been going into the CAD and the design, the computer designs, answering customers' questions um, about, you know, just what goes into, you know, these aircraft because it's a whole lot more than uh, what you may think if you haven't been in one of those. So, Alpha, uh, I'm going to give the floor to you for a little bit. Talk a little bit about how we ended up with the Gripen before us. Is Alpha there? Thanks for your support. There he is. Sorry. Uh, thanks for your support, guys. <laughs> a lot of we're seeing chat blow up. So again, as James said, just keep your questions coming. We're going to try and answer those as as the show progresses. But uh, this is our one ninth scale Gripen. So a lot of our recent European aircraft have actually been one ninth scale. So if you look at look back, we've got the MiG twenty nine, MiG twenty one, L thirty nine, uh, the Venom. All of those are are one ninth scale. The Gripen is that perfect sweet spot where it's been six years since we did a Delta, the, the first 80 millimeter Mirage. You know, she's, well, I love that aircraft, but she's, she's a bit long in the tooth. And so we noticed a lot of people asking for a larger Delta, the single engine configuration uh, compared to other Deltas out there really gave us an advantage in terms of power, which is why we said, we got to make it big, modernize it. This is the first 80 that has lights and suspension struts and full coverage doors. So for those of you who love the lights on the Avanti and love the full coverage doors from the T-33, we've now put all of that into an 80 millimeter aircraft. It's actually, it's really, a, it's a 90 in my mind. It's 63 inches long, sort of 1.6 meters long. And to help you all out with transportation, the front foot of it comes off for transport. But as you can see here, she's uh, transportable as most Deltas are, still exciting. No one's done a Gripen. Uh, in this, in foam electric, full bird, sort of full house controls. And so we really, really wanted to do one. And um, single six set power system. This is running an in runner as well, which we'll cover more in the yep. specs. But uh, those of you who love the Avanti and the T-33 and how those aircraft fly, this is going to be a bird for you. Anyone who wanted to try 3D thrust vectoring, uh, we do have an optional upgrade. This is the aircraft that you're going to yeah, learn man. those those skill sets on. And it's bigger so you can get a, a good idea as far as where it's pointed. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll am I'm take it. Pretty I mean, excited. I'm just excited. I have yet to fly a canarded uh, aircraft yet, so I'm excited about that. I do always love Deltas. I mean, I probably started some of those original, like, wings, you know, prop wings and stuff like that is where I started, and Elevons are always fun. So now to get the, uh, you know, the full <laughs> action, yeah. just I like the idea of, you know, pulling back. I got my Elevons up canards down and then reverse i'm excited to see what she does in the sky it's just going to be an entirely <laughs> right. different experience you know than uh than say the l39 or the avanti or some of our other 80 millimeters you know and that's why we love to do rc right if every plane was the same what would be the point of this so i'm really excited for just exactly something yeah, this is this is we want it to be easy to fly out of the gate as deltas tend to be um you can fly real slow and all that sort of stuff uh, at the same time, you're absolutely right, James. When we look at this portfolio that we've been building over the past several years, we know a lot of our customer family, a lot of y'all in chat have sort of followed us along that progression. This is us trying to egg you along, egg you along a little bit with the MiG-29, a big 80. You know, how do we handle an aircraft that large, make it accessible, but still have some room to grow, a bit of runway? And the Gripen is, again, Again, part of that progression in that conversation of let's all up our skill set a bit. Let's say we can drive Canarda Deltas. Let's say we know how to set them up can you guys see and yet um, and scale them out and all that sort of stuff. The yeah, I love flashes. the livery on the bird. The livery is awesome. It's a centennial scheme yeah. by Czech, uh, Czech Republic. So 1918 to 2018. Exactly, yeah. Was there uh Yeah, you know, everyone knows that a lot of us here at Motion RC, we're, we're big history guys. We love sort of remembering our heroes so that we can we can keep them, uh, keep them prominent in our minds and just honoring the past. And we always want to be respectful and mindful of, of the sacrifices that militaries around the world have made. The Czech Republic, uh, in their current iteration, their air force was first created in 1918. So a 100-year 100 at the making of this livery, Air Force. You can see on the tail flash, this is a real uh, aircraft for those not familiar. It's not a fantasy scheme. Uh, this is an aircraft that flies and continues to do so. And it commemorates um, 
the existence of that Air Force fighting with the Allies and into NATO in the present day. So we thought it the perfect opportunity to, um, you know, to represent something new. I also think it just, it looks hot. It looks so yeah, hot. Like, it does. It does. It really and does. And what's great about it, it's it, the decals are pre-applied out of the box. So like the L-39, like uh, the T-33, like the MiG that just uh, that's that guys are going to be getting. You are you pull it out of the box, all these nice water slides on the tail flashes done for you. The canards have awesome uh, detail. And the way the decals are, um, very easy to cover if anyone's going to go primer it and put on your own scheme. Um that's, you know, another reason why the water slides just work the best. And they just look so hot. And I love that, you know, majority of it is the gray. So, you know, you can just change the tail and make it a little different or the canards. But uh, I don't see why you'd want to. This thing is pretty, pretty mean looking. I'm a big fan of red, white, blue. And I really like both sides of it uh, from both angles just look a little different. And it's really exciting. So, um, Alpha, while I have you, we'll go... Uh, Let's run through some of the features. So the first one, again, is the, the Fidelity. So check out this picture, guys. That's our model with a real one. Um, and it's pretty intense yeah. how you get those lines right, Alpha. Yeah, it, it's important to nail, you know, with the Gripen, it's important to nail um, how it looks from certain angles. And we really tried, like the MiG-29, or really tried hard to, to not cheat on proportions and not cheat on sort of over layout of things. Something like a warbird, which again, guys, warbirds are coming, but a lot of older style warbirds, you need to make adjustments to, for example, the, the size of their horizontal stabs. It's a common thing. Um, with the jet, we really try to keep everything the same size and relative proportion to it. And it shows in, in sort of side by side comparisons like this. We want people to say that's a gripping. It looks like a gripping. The intakes aren't oversized. Um, there aren't weird things happening to to different surfaces, and um, it also flies. It's 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 very maneuverable. It flies like the real Gripen. For those not familiar, the real Gripen has a tighter turning radius than the F-16. It's very very agile aircraft, and so it is with this one as well. Yep, GB. I see your comments, man. Look at the sidebar. We're gonna get to the spec, baby. You just sit back and enjoy yourself. Yep. <laughs> How wide are the wings? <laughs> Next one, impressive size. So again, guys, you see me, my ugly mug. That was me the other day uh, on a cloudy day. We almost didn't think we were gonna have the pictures mm -hmm. we did, but uh, 63 and a half inches long. So again, I'm 72 inches. I'm six feet, um, and it's a significant sized uh, 80 millimeter jet, which is just awesome as well. Uh, again, you got the full functioning canards. So this is something if you're going to do this and you don't make full function canards, then might as well just throw the design on the floor <laughs> and start over. So uh, I love that. And we'll get into it in the assembly, guys. The assembly of this couldn't be easier. You don't even have to do much for the canards. It's like all set up for you. You're just going to have to do some mixes, um, you know, regard depending on the protocol you use. Uh, then we have, we did the century of service already, so we know. Retracts, guys, they are nice and they grass ready. Um, like any other of our 80 millimeters that people take off from grass, you should have no problem. And uh, we could show you a little later, there's a cool uh, like braking feature. Don't want to call it a brake, but like a cant to the, uh, to the gear when they compress, which uh, is just cool. I love these little features. Again, you got the inrunner power. So we'll go over the spec again, but the 1920 KV inrunner, the one that's in the MIG, um, obviously only one in this one, but uh, with the 100 amp ESC inside and the 5 amp EC, I believe, is in there as well. LED lighting. So you got nav lights under each canard on the side, red and green, and the big, uh, nice nose gear light, which comes down. And then, uh, yeah, that would be it on our little features list. So uh, I'm excited. <laughs> Either way, yeah. I love just watching the comments as we go. Alpha said it in there. Yeah, we're in the chat of, too. Kind of, Alpha's kind of blowing up here. Everywhere, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're triple dipping here. But yeah, guys, so between LED, LED lighting, 12-inch removable nose cone, and suspension struts, we tried to give you as much of, of the full bird experience um, in this aircraft. I fully expect some of you will be going to hollow out the airplane and putting in a 90. Again, we really like the 80 millimeter inrunner power system. It appears a lot of you like that power system as well. So the aircraft can achieve uh, 110, 120 mile an hour top speeds at the same time, B 
being a Delta, it's very floaty. It, it lands a lot like the F-22, for those of you familiar with how that aircraft lands. Which is uh, you awesome. can come in at a high alpha if you really want to, but other than that, it just it slows down like a puppy. Um, uh, someone had asked how it flies compared to the Mirage. So I think we've got a Mirage in studio. Yeah, man. But, that's, um, that's what we're leading. We can, we can, we've got an 80 millimeter Mirage in studio. That's still one of my absolute favorites. And, and you can see that's sort of the Delta. size difference. So they, they, they're they going to fly similarly in the terms of being Deltas. The main difference will be because the Gripen is so much larger, it's going to be one, easier to see. And then two, your wing loading ends up advantaging the um the grip in it just a little bit i mean it's, so i'm hoping you know, for all of you guys who've been asking for 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 deltas and look no coverage you know, doors on the bottom you'd expect the us to make them a bit bigger yeah yeah, yeah i still love that little yeah. airplane i love I, I definitely love the garage too <laughs> she's fun and i just we just posted a uh, a video last week of a guy i forget his name but we shared a video of a guy high alpha in that thing right across the runway i mean that thing's super powerful. Yeah. And then the other one, while we're in the size... And you're right, F900. The canards definitely will help us, um, helps the grip and get around in turns, as I had mentioned, having such a tight turn radius. Yeah. And then you got your L39, which is, you know, a little more comparable. We know the Mirage is a small, but they're both one ninth scale. Yep. You know, so, like, these scale up to each other. The Gripen would be bigger than the L39. They look really nice. Yeah, they're both approximately <laughs> yeah, one ninth really nice scale. Next to each so. other right now in the shot. They do look really nice <laughs> next they're to really each yeah. other. Yeah. You know? That's awesome. And my, my this L39 got a little beat up. This is the original one that we got for the videos. She's seen a thing or two. <laughs> what is that, Farmers insurance? Yeah, guys, so I'm, I'm glad everyone thinks an aircraft like this would be 499 because, again, candidly, being a 90 millimeter size with all the fixings and lights and suspension truss and full coverage doors, it, it, it normally would be in that price point. Um, we're delivering this to everyone on pre-order for 409. 409. So, so like, uh, right as we posted the product, the product page in pre-order should be live in right about uh, right about an hour, guys. So sit tight. This is your this yeah. is your live walk around of the aircraft. But um, yeah. and then at the but end, yeah, I think quick. it's a I think it's a crazy price, frankly. Sorry. <laughs> I hate stepping over Alpha, but guys, if there's there's like a little delay, so bear with me. Somebody yelled at me last MIG one we did. They said I'm so unprofessional for talking over you. So I'm sorry about that. But um, uh -huh. what's it called? We'll put all the links to anything we talk about back into this video because this video will replay as soon as it's over um, throughout the weekend. So when you want to go back, I'll put time codes to every time we start a new section. So if you wanted to come back to just check the spec or just check, you know, the unboxing assembly, um, you know, that's... Uh, you know what you're gonna do i see somebody asking is there an arf yes there'll be an arf plus i believe right yes of course yep, there's an arf plus that's it you know so it'll just be the pnp though and the arf plus in both eu and dot com so um you know everybody's gonna be able to enjoy this so i say quickly let's bring up the spec page so we could just lay it out there guys the main aspects of the spec because as soon as the product pages go live the uh the uh manual will be there everybody can pour through that but the wingspan again, or oh, I messed up. Wingspan. I put the wingspan where the length is, and the length where the wingspan is. Ah, oh, just looking at that now. Of course. So the length is sixteen hundred thirteen millimeters long, or sixty-three and a half inches, and the width is eight hundred eighty-two millimeters, or thirty-four point seven two in the width. Obviously, most most jets, the wingspan is not what you go for. It's not like a warbird where you're worried about wingspan. But you can see the uh, length. Motor again, as we said, the 3658 1920 brushless KV in well KV brushless in runner, with the 100 amp ESC with the 5 amp BEC. The fan is an 80 millimeter with a nine bladed fan inside. That's been in a lot of our high performance jets, so you know guys have really loved that. I've been loving that jet. You just saw me fly my Batman L39 on that power system. The servos all digital metal gear throughout. Um, you know, and Alpha, you could talk a little bit more about that. And then EPO foam, as you'd expect. You know, those are the big key specs I think everybody runs to. And anything else, uh, obviously, is going to be on the product page. And we could talk about it in the Q&A a little later on. So, Alpha, uh, I'll, I'll bring it back to you, buddy. Is he Graphic, there? guys. She's, oh, six, there he is. she's 63 inches long. Uh, not 63-inch yes. wingspan, obviously. <laughs> I, but, I messed um, up. 
But yeah, dead beef, uh, I'll answer your question live. Yeah, so changing the blade count doesn't necessarily mean it goes faster. So you don't want to think in terms of is a 12 blade 80 millimeter going to be faster than a nine blade. It, you need to look at the EDF itself, the power plant, um, which by that I mean what motor is powering that EDF impeller, and then the aircraft. So all of those things work in concert. Um, suffice to say, this 80 millimeter nine blade in runner power system, 6S4000 to 6000, uh, in an airplane configured like this, yeah, she'll she'll hit she'll hit 120. That same fan in other airplanes may go a little faster. It may go a little slower. Again, there are a lot of variables at play here. Yeah, I saw somebody said any gluing. Yes, oh. it's a two-piece fuselage. Um, there is a seam back here, and uh, we'll get to that because, as you can see down there, yeah, we'll go through we'll talk about why and assembly. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk about why in a bit, and we'll talk exactly talk about why. But also, as with all you're going to see, it comes the way they package these things is just as impressive as the way they design the aircraft as well. Cost, Federico, we already spoke about that, but 409 in the U.S. is where we landed. Um, control setups, Justin, we will definitely talk about that. Right now, she's a seven-channel bird, um, if that helps, because you have two Elevon leads and you have two canards and no flaps. So take away the flaps and add those and you're at seven uh, channels and we, we could talk about that I could show you how I have it plugged in and such and uh, when it'll be available guys we're looking at what mid October mid to late October is uh, when this we one's said it come. at late late October yeah late October so late October is when this baby's gonna be coming um, but really awesome uh, Christopher we'll answer that question during the Q&A uh, and I see everybody how wide are the canards dude we're going to answer those questions. Size questions, you know me. I'll post size. We'll get in Cobby Squawk to answer yeah. all the little minutia yeah. details. We're trying to, I'm trying to write all these little know. things. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to them in the Q&A. But keep, keep typing them, guys. <laughs> Just sit tight throughout the show. We'll be answering them a, a little later. Yeah, we're going to have a whole Q&A section, and we'll do it. So I say let's jump into the unboxing assembly. Alex, you've got those uh, prepped up. So we'll start with the unboxing. And you can see me. Now, again, guys, I got an early production, so I didn't have... Uh, box art or the regular free wing blue tape box. So you're just going to see me pulling the parts out as they come. So again, the uh, the first thing I pulled out was the vertical <laughs> the vertical stabilizer, and you know you just you just marvel at the sticker work. I mean that's hard enough to do as it is, so that always makes me excited. Then you got your main wings; they're going to be on top. And again, you see decals already done. What I do love about this model, a lot of plastic bits all around. There's plastic on the leading edge of the wings, nylon hinges, servo door covers, ball links all pre-installed, and you see the two wings there. And then just one lead coming out. It doesn't need a ribbon cable because it's just one servo in each wing for your Elevon. Then you got your baggie that's going to have all your peripherals, your control rods, things like that. And you see your nose cone, it is magnetically connected along with a little wooden plate to make sure it stays on there. Then there are your canards, each one with a different graphic. Again, I love, I love the schemes on them, but very simple. And there's the back half of the fuselage. So this we'll talk about in a little bit because that TV option Alpha mentioned earlier, um, you know, is going to look similar to that. Then you got your wing rails. I love these because they are plastic. The foam is encased in plastic and they screw on. So the entire wing rail system is plastic, which is great. I know a lot of guys have wanted that in the past. And then you get to the, the guts of the bird, the, uh, the front portion of the fuselage where everything lives. Your doors, they are spring-loaded. You can barely pull them up when the gear's down, but I had to take a peek inside. Really nice, nice and flush on the bottom. And it's all spring-driven doors. There's your motor inside, your in-runner in the back half. And you can see the, uh, the holes for the carbon on the back half of the fuselage for when you do make that glue joint. That goes in there nice and strong. And then taking a look inside, guys, really simple in here, which is great. A lot of space for anything from a 4,000, probably up to a 6. Easy you can fit inside, be up to you. And then just taking a look at the beauty that is the Joss 39 Ripon. Again, a model personally, I have no, you know, personal attachment to it, but I love how sleek it is. So it was new to me to go back and like, you know, watching videos of it once I heard that this was coming. And it's a, it's a, it's, it's a hot bird. It's something like, wow, why didn't I know more about this? And, uh, you know, the manufacturer who makes these, um, 
have a really amazing video on YouTube that everybody should go check out because it's like a commercial for, I guess, I don't know, they put together some like movie trailer-ish commercial trying to get countries, I guess, to buy the, uh, the Gripen for themselves and it looks absolutely awesome. You know, they show it as Alpha, they call it like a stole jet. You know, they show it in there literally taking off from a highway and that's the sell that's a selling feature it can get in and out of tight spaces um for a jet which was crazy to me um when i saw that but something i recommend everybody go checking out at uh, some point maybe i'll share it on hobby squawk somebody should but um so there you go guys you see it coming out of the box um she looks fantastic alpha anything you uh you have to add here or you want to go right into the assembly let's jump into assembly I just like okay. looking at it. Um, I, now, I will say one quick oh. thing. Someone asked about uh, the grip and wing tips. Yeah, they are capped in plastic, and they do have, as you noticed, the free wing MWS. So just to say it yes. again, your one ninth scale uh, ordnance, your your sidewinders, your AIM 120s, whatever you've got from yeah. the, the many other one ninth scale aircraft we've done, they're going to plug up to that grip and uh, just fine. Yeah, they have the yeah very easy. No pylons though, or anything. So that would be something our customizers you know if you really want to load this baby up then that's going to be on you but you know again she's in like a centennial scheme here so i don't think i like her clean as she is i'm not adding drag to something that i plan on learning more high alpha stuff with this especially uh when we get into the additional upgradable feature a little later but um, going to the assembly, so Alex had started playing this. The only part I didn't do yet, I actually didn't glue the tail on mine yet because I thought I was going to do something different back here. But you glue in the, uh, the fuselage first, as you would expect, so score it. And then you're going to do your vertical tail, and it's just plugging in you know, one servo for your rudder. And then adding four screws for the vertical tail. As you see here, very similar to a majority of the newer freewing birds. Then your main wing, you do have like two spars. So one goes through the fuselage and then each wing has a spar already in it. So there's two holes to line up your spars. You connect one servo and four screws is gonna put together all of your main wings. And these look very familiar to anybody, uh, you know, who is interested, who's ever done a free wing bird. So two for each wing. And you can see I'm the best screwer in the business. <laughs> <laughs> Then we got these two uh, screws, one each for the canards. That's what I love. That's already pre-installed, your rod. So you don't have to do anything in there. It, you just slide the canard on and one screw, and it's flush, and it goes right in uh, very easily, and then you work it in the transmitter uh, later. These four screws are going to be for your wing rails, your missile rails. So you got two for each side, which, again, just keeps them on there nice. And you can see the plastic to plastic where they meet. So if you want to add a little foam tack or anything, guys, want to make sure those don't back out. That's up to you. Then the pitot tube, you just slide it in. It's grooved in nicely. Um, again, I always suggest when moving around, I always have a heart attack moving these things around because I break pitot tubes like they're going out of style. So just be careful. But then you have this awesome feature. So it's a foam cannon. It's molded. I can show you that in a little bit. There's a whole piece molded under the, the, the right part of the fuselage the bottom of the fuselage that fits a cannon on the bottom so that's the only thing that's off center if you will but i love the way they did it and i can show you that in a second then you got your antenna that goes on the tail i added a little foam tack for you there you don't really need to it's a pretty snug fit but i always like to be safe and that one i don't think i'm going to knock off as easily as the nose one then you just have your little peripherals that go around you got some vertical fins your antennas on the top as you'd expect just to give it that nice you know, it's got little spikes all over. It's such a cool looking plane in general, but you can see here. Very easy to finish it up and all around. I mean, if it took me more than 20 minutes to get it assembled, uh, you know, that, that I, I obviously do this a lot. So, you know, I, I, I tend to assemble these and I didn't even bother looking at the manual because it's just pretty uh, self-explanatory how it goes together. It shouldn't take you long to get it assembled. And yes, the only glue joint is right here. This is where the uh, fuselage meets, as you see. And then this is just... Oh, is this a time lapse of me putting it together? It's the whole thing. Oh, wow. Unboxing to I didn't even know you were you were rolling on that. Wow, you surprised me. What do you me. think my job is? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what your job is back there, but you do it well, whatever it is. So that's awesome. Uh, guys, yeah, flight videos, um, we're going to get out next week. So the first time you see this fly, though, we're going to hold off till next Friday's live show. That might as well be... 
you know, might as well get there. So the idea is getting out Monday, Tuesday, how whatever day, obviously weather depending this week with uh, Laura coming through. She, she gave us a lot of rain here in Atlanta. So uh, it hasn't been the best week to fly in general. Thank goodness, I guess. Um, so as soon as we get out, we're going to be flying around as we do. And then we'll show it next Friday live here. So, you know, please, if you're here, like this channel, subscribe. You'll get a notification. We go live every Friday at 12. And then the uh, flight videos are going to come next week. So, um, you know, uh, yeah, we'll have, the whole week, yeah, the following week we'll have, <laughs> you know, the individual videos, you know, that we don't show on the live show next Friday. So you're going to have to bear like, with share, us, subscribe, guys. and click that notification bell, guys. Yeah, we're just teasing you, you know. <laughs> but, like, what are we going to do? <laughs> Again, I only got this so early. It was, luckily enough, we got it assembled and got the, the media we got. You know, this this popped up uh, when it popped up, and I'm just excited to be here with it in front of me to uh, talk to you guys. Uh, zigzag, not talking about tanks today, my my friend. We're gonna we're gonna focus on the gripping today. There will be a time for tanks. Yeah, trust jump me. into Hobby Squawk. There's a there's a great uh, there's a great thread going now in Hobby Squawk Zigzag asking about handlong tank ranges. You can yeah. increase the ranges by doing the different controller, but do jump into the squawk. Look at Alpha. Can't help there. itself. Alpha. I said we're not talking about tank. <laughs> not I'm, not right I'm now. Pointing him where he should go. <laughs> go that way. <laughs> He's pulling rank. So there it is. So guys, again, we want to do it quicker. Last last show, live live show with the Mig. I went through the entire T of the assembly, but that video is coming probably Wednesday. We'll get the uh, we'll get the uh, individual assembly video, and then next Friday we will be doing uh, hopefully doing flying videos. You know, because I'm so stoked to fly this. We want to get Patrick out there, let him rip on it. And uh, maybe anyone else who's at the field who might want to come and rip on it, you guys can do it. Um, <laughs> you know, we'll see. Might as well throw that out there. So on to uh, our next bit. So Alpha, actually talk a little bit about why you chose this scheme um, over anything else. Because we do have some pictures of the full-scale bird we can show. Yeah, the full-scale birds, I mean, Gripens are, are NATO standardized aircraft. They're operated by almost a dozen um, countries currently, and basically all of them are gray. So we have a lot of gray birds, and um, we've, we have a lot of gray birds. Last year, we have a lot of gray birds coming, but the MiG-29 and the Gripen gave us the opportunity to sort of, again, just try something new. I'm frankly tired of looking at a bunch of gray birds in the hangar. So it was important <laughs> to us to 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 sort of call out and 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 keep in the forefront of all of our minds just the sacrifices that air forces around the world have made and and it resonated with me and then a lot of our team here uh, that the Czech Air Force celebrated their 100th year anniversary. You can't really say that for a lot of countries because you needed to be around in 1918 and needed to have an air force fielded for World War One, um, but they did. And, uh, and maybe that's a teaser for what's to come. We don't know. But, but we like that the story behind it. And also, again, practically speaking, high visibility on the canards. Uh, the red, white, and blue is easy to orient, which is very important for us with deltas. A lot of things we've learned from the Mirage. And so you get that high visibility aspect. They are water slides, as Bill had asked. So these are factory applied out of the box. Nice and smooth, they lay down. Um, Get just it's it's I want to give everyone something where they can show up at the field and have something that's unique and and perhaps if someone isn't familiar with the Gripen, not only is it a canarded Delta, it looks crazy, but it's got a really, a really unique, uh, livery on it. Yeah, I love it. And then guys, we just want to show you while we're here, sort of like a mid break because normally on this live show we always go around the community. So we just want to throw out there. Obviously, I'm excited to see what customers do to this one. I'm excited to see what they do to their MiG-29, and we're just going to show you what some of our customers do to all our aircraft, because this is the first time you're joining Motion RC, guys. Maybe you don't know. You can always take a livery and make it your own. A little paint, some Benchcraft airbrushes maybe, yep. you know, uh, and you see what people do. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Look at that. This, these are our AL-37s. They come in either blank white or with a Motion RC scheme, and look what these guys are doing. We got an F F-16. I mean... These were a lot of these were a part of our uh, competition we had earlier this year on customization. The shark, the Canadian shark T33 is amazing. Check out what this guy yeah, did to his yeah. OV10. I mean, 
this is what people and all do. these aircraft are similar in that we we try and really give everyone an aircraft that flies well out of the box that's wearing a, a really cherry scheme but it's water slides guys if you want a primer gray just take a few minutes and paint right over it and start from scratch and you can iterate and create all of these examples you're seeing here as james said are what all of you have made and that's inspiring to us so we're sort of providing the the canvas uh, and then we really sit back and watch you guys take it to to another level. So keep it coming. I love this one, Rob. I Thomas love seeing with these Lakers refinishes. Oh Mirage. gosh, like, yeah. I, like this is this is right up my alley. Every Something single one of these. Different. Yeah, <laughs> but those two yeah. Mirages, that even was... that French one that came through, oh, though that, that we thought that was going to win the competition yeah, when it came through, and I don't even think it made out the first round. You guys are tough. <laughs> People are tough. <laughs> but yeah, guys, I mean, this is what everybody does. So. I'm excited to see like anything else. And I think this this model calls something about this model too, uh, to me, uh, would look cool just in, in any wild, crazy thing your heart can imagine. Like I appreciate a scale livery just as much as I appreciate um, somebody who just makes it their own entirely. I mean, you saw me, I took an L39 last week and just threw Batman on it because I'm a nerd. But uh, you know, like that that's the type of stuff. That is awesome. I, I love the shape of this. And it, me and Alpha were joking around like this probably would have been more of a Batman-y type uh, aircraft just based on its shape. Um, you know, then yeah, if it was black with the fins and then everything hanging off of it, this would be a this would be a bad airplane. I'd almost have to cut the, you know, add some foam this way to make the shape, but all good either way. So I'm seeing, oh, Rob Thomas is here. That was his, la I believe that's you, right, Rob? That was your uh, Lakers bird that he's, he has so many cool designs he sort of just showed up one day oh and that just is dropped yeah. dropped knowledge you, on everybody Rob. with a couple of <laughs> yeah. other awesome schemes but he just like you know made an entrance into the facebook customer <laughs> community uh in a big way oh, yeah. and uh you know love seeing that stuff so excited yeah big shout out to rob yeah so looking up we are all right guys it is time for questions and answers so i've got the plane in front of me alex can zoom in on that lens we can go around it um so what i'd say is take some emojis if you want to maybe we'll see your question more drop a few emojis before or after it and these questions are going to run by fast so i hopefully you know i'm going to be trying to read them and both of us as we go and trying to remember some of them uh you know yeah we're all nerds anthony 100 percent, anthony hickson that's i mean Yes, this is what we play with. At least that's what hey, our wives think, right? Flying nice Ant you, made it, man. I wish I went to that. He invited me to a Packers-Cowboys game that time. I went out to Dallas, and I didn't take him up on his offer, and the game ended in overtime, and I'm so mad at myself. <laughs> <laughs> so mad yeah. at myself. Oh, they want, us, they want to cycle that gear. Cycle the gear. Something I can do that. So I'm going to – I just like the nice tilt on her. To show you guys delivery but here she is so again guys yeah, it's so, instantaneous which is nice alpha you could talk yeah so guys i'm just gonna run through a bunch of these questions in no particular order yeah so danny Colazzo, max capacity we recommend a four thousand to a six thousand um there's a there's a fairly wide range in there but um yeah that's that sort of max capacity, six thousand. I think that's going to be similar to the MIG. Whereas, if you want, if you want to be high alpha, in, you're going to want a four thousand. You want to lower the weight, you know. But yep. if you want, if you want to just time, go fast, <laughs> fast go and fast, flight time. you know. Like I'm sure I'll, I plan on flying it on four thousands, the fifty one hundreds, five thousands, and I'll definitely try a six thousand in it. Might as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, someone asked about the canards. Yes, the, uh, these are full function canards. Uh, full function you know, canards. We did conceal the. We did conceal the hardware inside the aircraft. So notice you you don't see yeah. any um, don't see any control armatures hanging outside of the airplane. All that's inside. It actually took a lot this of work to do. <laughs> but this um, is right roll, they're concealed left inside. Roll, there you elevator go. Elevator up, down. So, and that just took a little you bit of mixing. You got full function so. canards. Full yeah. Someone asked canards, about so. setup. Uh, this is this I can a couple talk about y harnesses and basic mixing. Yeah, cover it yeah. for us, James. Uh, you know, setting it up, I went straight to the receiver. So again, you're getting inside these pockets. I'll show you. There are two. So this already comes screwed down. I haven't even actually went in here. 
but there are two screws you take this cover off that's going to give you access to the to the servo if you need it i didn't even bother um it was all straight when i plugged it in so i just roll with it but basically inside yeah. i am seven channels i have my two canard leads each on auxiliary two and auxiliary three that's just where i put them and then my two elevon leads are in the aileron and elevator port so i set up my transmitter for elevon setup so when you go into and you know something we could talk about later we made a separate video of this too that'll be coming out um so you do elevons and then it was a series of four mixes so i mixed each elevon to each canard so four ways. So it was an Elevon to this canard, Elevon to this canard, Elevon to this canard, Elevon to this canard. And you're doing it for your aileron channel, so you get your roll. And then you're doing it for your elevator channel, so you get your pitch. Um, yeah, seven channel setup, guys. all about. Yep. And this yeah, is the way she channel. should function. Seven channel. So when you pull back yeah. on the sticks, you're going to see your, your the front of your canards go up. The, the back of your elevons go up. When you go down, they work, as Alpha was explaining to me, in like a circle. Think of it like a circle. And then when you roll, they work in unison. So left side will work together, right side will work together. Yeah. And, so uh, let's keep going with the questions, guys. Uh, yeah. Gear doors, yeah. So these are three-way full coverage gear doors, um, yeah. as you saw. And they're spring-loaded. So it keeps the weight yeah, down, too. They're sprung-loaded. Guys love that. Uh, the main struts are suspension. Should James, well, let's can show we, uh, yeah, let's let's show a basketball test, so a dribble test. <laughs> dribble test. So people Alex, asking about grass down? again, guys. These are yeah. these are Ready? common sort of wheel heights for a lot of our aircraft. There's a lot of play on um, on the undercarriage. The mains especially have a. There's a lot of rearward the, play on trailing links. Watch the rear t rear tire. How it like cans in. Oof. So it actually has a little bit of a cant that's gonna, in essence, you know, just help you a little break a little bit. You know, not that we're calling it brakes, but it's awesome, you know, spring-loaded, awesome. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. No and you're right, Greg, so we did try to make it, yeah, no trouble off of grass. We did try to make the aircraft, you know, easily accessible for the masses to fly stock, but for those of you who really wanna go individual addressable uh, control surfaces you can do so in your radio really not that not difficult um chris yeah at max throws she she rolls like a drill bit um Good like the mirage so like we yeah. like we'll say and the manual will be on the website as well so you're always welcome to just program i always have a three three way um three way setup on my radio for for rolling pitch you know high medium and low if high is too much drop it down um, if it's still yep. high, go, Alex, go, actually, go back down to low. I'm going to, I'm going to bring the gear in. Can you focus on the cannon? That's something I mentioned earlier. So the cannon was just a cool feature Marsh. I love. So this gets yeah. molded Go in. ahead with the cannon. And, uh, what I love is like this whole side of the fuselage in the mold, they actually left it dug out, follow my finger all the way up. So that obviously what your cannons firing wouldn't hit your fuselage. And just a little added feature. So this gets glued in, and I'm definitely going to kind of add some paint or something to that, make it look cool, but that is awesome. Uh, I love, you know, I love the little detail of that just on the bottom. Just the little things. But I do like, too, there's nothing on the bottom, so she can, you know, some models, she can live. You don't want to break antenna or anything. She could live just, you know, on the ground. You're not going to mess anything up, um, which is great as well if your gear is dropped. So, you know. Easy to put on a rack, easy to put a bungee if you hang your aircraft, because storage is always yeah. a thing, you know? Deltas are so easy, they're so inherently easy to transport, <laughs> which, is a, yeah, yeah. which is a nice little perk. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Okay, let's keep on going, guys. This is, it, it's again, 63 inches long. There's a 12-inch yep. removable nose cone. So y you chop your total length to, to uh, 51 inches. I'm talking about Sick. transport. Uh, magnetic nose cone, of course. Put it down again. I'm six feet, so I'm putting the tail. That's the nozzle on the floor. Yeah. Tail on the ground. That's it. Standing there yeah. with me and, you know, about another foot from my head. So it's a, uh, you know, definitely. Oh, <laughs> almost just picked TJ it up. TJ Rosenberry, it, it does not toast bread unless, I mean, unless you 
run it at full throttle for 10 battery packs nonstop and put a little piece of toast on the uh, ESC. It'd probably toast bread. If that's what you're looking for. <laughs> Get your battery hot enough. Uh, actually, Alpha, um, I didn't see Ren... do, you, do you know the weight? Yeah, go ahead. Um, she's about the T33's weight dry. Yeah, that's okay. the thing we try to do, guys, is while we're making certain aircraft larger, wing loading is very important. And so we, we, we do our absolute best on the inside of the airframe to keep our weight similar. So when you're looking at... Uh, when you're looking at sort of the aircraft you already have in terms of accessibility, you're not gonna you're not gonna get an aircraft that's suddenly 50% heavier if you're in the same power class. So an 80 millimeter in runner are always going to be within 5% or so uh, weight of each other. Uh, and then of course, as we all know, standard size batteries. We all have six to uh, four thousands to five thousands to six thousands. You know anything up there. Pontiac, we'll, we'll jump into a close-up of the cockpit. That's, that's actually a good idea. Sure. Maybe we can show them the inside. There is a lot of plastic on the aircraft. A lot of yep. all those fins are plastic, and the intakes are capped in plastic. The uh, the wingtip rails are are capped in plastic. Um, but uh, but we are still able to keep the weight down in other ways. Chris, Kenny, uh, there's no blue box in this model. Uh, it actually, not, it's no. very simple. We just use a seven channel receiver, um, two Y harnesses and mixing in your radio to achieve uh, your full function canards. So there's no blue box doing yeah, any mixing. Underneath the battery tray, there is a, just the LED controller. So that's what uh, has the LED. The nose light is on a sequence. So when you you know, when your gear goes up, that light turns off. And then when your gear goes, that yep. light turns on. That's it. And that's all underneath the battery John Hirsch, tray. Uh, yeah, it's all under the battery tree. Yeah. LED after John Hirsch, option. LED afterburner options from the factory. We'll talk more about that in the next couple of weeks. Squawk and we'll talk, you know? Squawk and we'll talk. <laughs> That's the word. No, the Chris yeah, Kenny, we'll you mix that in your radio. So you're setting up your radio for Elevons, and then you mix each canard to each Elevon. So, uh, you know, and that's, we talked about that a little yep. earlier. So when this video is done, remember this video goes up for replay. So you can check each section. Remember the red bar slides, depending on the section we're on. So you're going to want to get to the point, uh, just after the unboxing and assembly where I spoke about the mixes, but we're going to have a separate video where I show you how I mix it up. Cause again, it's the type of thing you could plug any, any Elevon into either the Aileron or Elevon port and any canard into any you know open port and then just make sure you know where they are and then when you start the mixing it's it's very simple to uh to do the mixes to do it um thinking stabilizer not required for delta i'm not gonna go with a gyro on this one i i yeah i don't think i'm we didn't fly them with I gyros yeah like you know i put one on the mig just because i'm the mig was intimidating for somebody who you know for me it was a big <laughs> and you know i wanted to make sure i didn't want to lose that baby um, you know, or do anything stupid, but this one I'm going, I'm going raw for this one. So I just got the 10 channel Admiral inside. I'll throw a satellite on it at some point. Probably there's a lot of space to, uh, above where the battery goes, which I like to add any of that stuff. So if you did want to add a gyro, you can add it here. If you wanted to add a satellite, you know, there's more than enough canopy space to fit any of those kind of electronics, but I'm just going to go standard. Um, I'm not afraid of this one in any way, shape, or form. I, I love flying the Mirage. I love flying Deltas. I, I love that. Um, so uh, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to. Sorry, crazy. Like, there's there's Monday 500 people in here, buddy. So we're not able to hit every single question. Just uh, stand by. Um, yeah. Crazy Aces is asking about vectoring option. No answer on price, guys. We keep saying the product pages are going live and they're they're yeah. very close. It'll be less than an hour, so all the information for pricing will be there. Oh. Um, and again, you're going to want to click the notification bell because this is intended as a this is a live unveiling of the product. The deep dive setup, configuration, radio settings, all those sorts of things. 3D TV, uh, which is again an optional, optional separately purchasable option. Um, yep. We're going to be talking about those things in subsequent videos. So I like yep. the excitement. Just yep. sit tight for, for further details on that. And I'm not sure. Does anybody know if the product page is live yet? Todd's in here. Todd Breda, he makes all of our product pages. He does tons of graphic work for us. And he flies the heck out of uh, yeah. anything and everything. So he's in <laughs> yeah, there. He'll a great let job you know. on these pages. 
Oh, he, he kills it every time. Live, he's saying about 20 minutes the pages should be live, so hold your horses. And, uh, you know, we're going to be... We're going to be rocking and rolling. So other questions. Again, uh, Raisin Flight video, We only just I only just received it Tuesday. We Preparing for this show, we did not get out to fly yet. The weather, I'm down in Georgia, and Hurricane Laura kind of just destroyed our whole week as far as uh, weather-wise, even though, I mean, we didn't get what Louisiana got, but we just got rain and wind for the last, like, you know, four or five days. So, yeah. Um, the plan is to get out next week, and the first time you see this baby fly should be this show uh, next Friday at 12 o'clock. So, you know, if we're not showing it live, that means you'll probably see some, something that happened, which would be fun, because we'll roll with that too, I guess. But I'm excited about it. Yeah. Uh, Cole Adler, nose, uh, nose Yeah, it's, it's plastic. It's it plastic. wouldn't be metal. So I yep. did, I don't even think I glued it in. There we go. So this comes separate. And then this is all plastic, and there's like a, uh, you know, a little. There's a groove in there. there. A groove where it fits perfectly, because yeah, that's the scale one has that look. Yeah, the real Grippen's got an interesting sort of fin set up on the pedo, so we didn't just want to simplify that and, and make a, a pedo. We added, molded in that, that fin and that groove. So you actually don't need to glue that part in. I think yeah. we use a, a dab of free wings tab glue but if you're transporting you're either popping the nose cone completely off or yeah. just popping that little uh that little pedo off sure we caesar what happens yeah keep caesar. asking the questions guys again we're trying to get to them all um sorry if we're missing some of them just ask a couple extra times and we'll try and get to them uh alpha flight times i'm i'm expecting at least four to five out of four thousand like yep I would that's what we fly Every, everything you know. has to has to hit four to five yeah, so we're, yeah. we're right about four to five for this bird. Um, if you, again, if you power soak and just keep the aircraft on blast the entire time, it's going to be standard, guys. Whatever you're flying with, yeah. your T-33s, your Avantis, your L-39s, you know, it's same power system, same battery setup. You're, you're looking at a similar flight time. Yes, this Gripen will fly slower than some of those aircraft, um, but it also being a Delta, you're accelerating through turns more and so net net they're all basically going to be within a few percentage points of each other yeah i see the rc project no there's no ordinance uh that comes with this bird the wing rails do have the same mws railing system that all our free wing jets are and they're one night this is one night scale so you know a lot of our jets ordinance packages will work with this and there are no pylons under the wing you know again we're in a centennial showbird scheme so um, yeah exactly didn't go for that and and things like that for the performance that this aircraft's gonna go like you don't want that stuff on there to weigh it down you know or drag it down if anything not that foam really weighs it down but like patrick said with the mig he's like you know all the ordnance is cool but it does nothing for the aircraft <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly know? um like christopher not... evanson you're asking um any reason we haven't gone with a magnetic detachable tail like the nose yeah simple reason it, you don't want to risk your your nose cone coming off or sorry your tail cone coming off or your tail cone being in any way askew so you know a glue yeah. bond it doesn't need to be epoxy or something super permanent we use free wing glue which is sort of a semi-permanent like a beacon type tack Foam tack, uh yeah. where you can you can you can pop it off and sort of slice it off but um you wouldn't want to rely on purely magnets because if that tail cone comes off in any way or, or the angle shifts in any way you're gonna it's gonna significantly affect how the aircraft flies you know that that's a dead bird in a lot of cases so for security uh, we mold the the tail cone and the fuselage pieces so that they sort of line up nice to each other and you know that your your alignment is is nice and sharp uh can we show the back end yeah we'll show the back end here <laughs> i'm on the back here there it is and i'm uh, just revving it up i took the throttle cut off Woo! Bur uh, Birkin, SV, yeah, you I can. See. So, so this is what we would say. I mentioned earlier in the comments, guys. This this is not a first EDF, but um, if you're flying an 80 millimeter, this is certainly a second EDF. So, if you're conf confidently operating your T33, thanks for your support. The Gripen shouldn't be. I mean, it's it's really not that hard to fly. So absolutely not a first jet, absolutely a second jet for anyone yeah. who's able to fly confidently. I'd say 70, 80, 90, you know, 
if you're like if you're flying a hundred mile an hour aircraft and able to bring it down and deal with the nerves of it all then the actual skill level required to operate the aircraft it's 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 a smaller smaller thing hey anders uh thank oh. you for coming I, I noticed Anders. we have something, and we have Anders, two guys from, from Sweden. So, yeah. again, this is your bird. Anders, Sob, Anders for those his of you son. Familiar. Yeah, and his son. It was that, his son oh flying last week. So his son's going to fly this. He was flying the Avanti. His son's going to do just fine. <laughs> You're right. On this one, You're I'm sure. Right. You know? Yeah, he'd be just Easy. fine. Just fine. Unbelievable. Uh... Yeah, you can't see the in runner. We got pictures of it, and that's all going to be on there. You'll see. I got pictures yeah. of the inside on the website and stuff. You know, standard configuration. Your ESC is sunk in in front of the motor, um, but not blocking any sort of air. Um, I do like the way, and Alpha, you can get into this because we're going to go behind the scenes. And if you guys don't know, Alpha, you know, he's the senior manager, designer extraordinaire. He gets into the CAD um, on his own Twitch stream of a lot of our products. Uh, just the other night, I mean, there are about 20 guys in this Discord um, and just talking, and we went on, we, we must have been with four hours or something, talking about the F4 and, you know, taking us through that model, the Corsair recently, um, going back into older models. But, you know, one thing, it's hard to show on camera. We did it in the, uh, the teaser that you saw at the beginning, but just, I love the way the intakes you know, the way you did that, too. I can't wait to see that uh, Twitch show that Alpha's going to do eventually that shows that. Yeah, we've well. done deep dives of the F4, uh, the Corsair. I don't know if you can see it, Alex. A but... few other aircraft. But, uh, yeah, guys, just jump in. We do a lot of this on Hobby Squawk as well. For, so for those of you not in there, I don't know if the just, light, uh, just jump on that. in. There it is. You can see the motor just through. But also, guys, what I love, too, plastic around the intakes. You know, there's a lot of nice plastic around some of the edges that might get, you know, when you're walking by a door frame or something, you nick, you know, the, the, the spots that we all nick and we do. It's nice to have them, you know, encased in plastic. So like this and the wing rail and stuff and the leading edge of the wing tips, because when you take your wings off for transport, you know, you can you can uh, rest them on that side, things like that. Yep. Uh, as far as gear location, Lars, again, we're, we're making decisions to depict the scale aircraft and translating that to practical RC. So landing gear configuration um, and layout, you know, it needs to look close enough to the real thing, but it really needs to operate well. So we're known for everyone's going to do this. We tend to oversize the wheels. A lot of people say, can I fly on grass? Well, the real one can't. So... <laughs> To make this one able to fly on grass fields for RC, we need to oversize the wheels. We need to tweak um, their positioning along the aircraft. So that's why we—that's what we did with the Gripen. Yeah, I see somebody. Um, uh, Paul, Paul Boyle. Oh, I'll, I'll take it first. Paul Boyle, can I see the battery bay? It's in here. But again, this video is going to replay. So right after we're done, you can go back and you know we've shown that already in the portion. Look for the assemb unboxing and assembly portion on the sidebar. When that goes, uh, you know, we get into there. But it should fit. The battery bay is going to fit anything from a 4,000 to a 6,000, um, at least in the Admiral range. I can't speak to the size of other packs. Yep. Alpha, you had a question that you saw? Uh, yeah, they're, they're flying. There's a lot of them. So um, yeah. I, I sort of missed. I, sorry, guys. I, I can't keep up with these things. Uh, is there a link to Hobby Squawk? Um, yeah, Frank. So if you go to Hobby Squawk, there's a What's Next Alpha thread, oddly named. But uh, people <laughs> tend to put their requests there. There are a few requests. If you're if you're into propeller aircraft, there's a Warbird request thread. If there's if you're into jets, there are, people will post. I like this airplane. In general, the What's Next Alpha tends to be um, a good place for post for people to post their requests. So go there. Uh, if you're asking like Ken Bird about the Avro Arrow, you know I, I have thought about that model. Um, if there are any specific models, you're you really would you, you would really like to see engage us there in Hobby Squawk. It's a bandwidth issue. That's the best forum that, that we have time to sort of get into. But we talk about a whole bunch of things. So ask us there and put your request there. We're always listening. Um, the MiG-29 was highly requested. I sort of every aircraft we've done has been highly requested by a certain group of people, the Gripen as well. Uh, I see you, George and Tony and TCAT and the guys <laughs> of you who have been talking about the Gripen now for quite some time. So a lot of that begins, or at least is fed, by what we see on forums. So let us yes. know. 
And you see our moderator, Todd Breda, in here. Uh, he just said they'll make it all, all the product pages will be live as soon as the show's over. And we'll add all those links into the description of this video. So if you are watching a replay of this video in the future, uh, those links should already be there. Yeah. Greg um, Hoff, this was about three years. Interestingly enough, we'll cover this on maybe the live show later. But uh, yeah, the Gripen we've been working on for, for quite some time. Most aircraft are one and a half to two years. The Gripen was finished along with the MiG uh, over a year ago. So, Alpha, uh, we just hit the one hour mark. So we do have behind the scenes stuff. Do you want to just talk a little bit about Yeah, some let's of jump the into some behind the scenes. Check this stuff out. This is what yeah. Alpha does on his Twitch, guys. And it's awesome. It's a whole different, you know, view on these things. Yeah, so the, the goal here is just to take people through you know, different steps. Um, we do a deep dive on how models are created. The goal being to sort of inspire people to get into this into this hobby or at least approach it in a different way to see that aircraft in your hangar or that boat or that tank and be able to justify to the wife, hey, this is more than just what it looks like. There's there's a lot of thought and care that goes into the crafting of of that model. So we answer questions live. People ask about specific things and uh, and again, go to Hobby Squawk where I'm posting a lot of this information, and we have links. Uh, we have links as well for the live shows that we do on stream. Yeah, and on his live show, he's they're pretty you know, fun. Yeah, they're fun because you're going around the entirety. Like you know, people ask, "Oh, how? What? Why'd you do landing?" And he's like, "Oh, let me show you." And he brings you right inside and can show you, you know, what parts are metal, what parts are plastic, what parts are, you know. One yeah. of those things we see. Anybody who's on social media sees the people. Yeah, who people. Say, oh, they're just foam. People and like to ask know, about. They're not. <laughs> yeah, people say they're just yeah. foam, and then we end up showing them the insides. Or a lot of a lot of questions, guys, that have been asked today. They're great questions. You know, landing gear and and power system and and ducting and canards. Well, what we can show you today is the aircraft as you receive it, which is just the outside. So we dive into the airplane, and say, well, you can't see this, but inside, this is where the landing gear meets the metal um, strengthening rod that ties into the strut. And th there are all these different things that we show on the engineering side to help you understand and maybe better appreciate what's what's hidden inside the aircraft to make it fly as it does and make it handle the way it does. Alpha, I just saw a question, and I totally forgot. Uh, Anders, you asked about the CG. CG is molded on the wings. So I think it's right. I forget where it is on my finger. My finger might be covering it. Let me, you can find it. I'm going to move the plane closer. I see it. They you see, see it? it now, yeah. They should see it right here, right? There it is. That's it. So CG molded on the wings, yep, guys, which I everyone. love. So now I don't even have to check it. Yeah, them CG molded in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not going to even, I could throw out my uh, People tape really right like that with the other aircraft where we've done it, um, which is I love it. which is something we're going to try and carry forward. Yeah. Keep it simple. Now you don't have to put a mark on, you know, on your plane somewhere or try to remember. Uh, it's just there and boop. So easy to CG. Yeah. And I do that in the <laughs> assembly unboxing video you guys will see. I CG'd yeah. where it yep. was, you know. And you're right, simple. Anders. Um Randers Ramshaw asked, how do, how do we go with the CG given that the model, you know, the real Gripen has has a very aft uh, CG. So that's part of the model magic. That's what we'll cover in, in maybe a live stream in the future. But um, you're right. The real aircraft is, is dynamically unstable. So we need to figure out a way to make it stable. And suffice to say, we molded in that CG point to give everyone that, that starting point to fly. That's where we've been flying it. The aircraft performs well. And from there, you can shift your battery and experiment within a given range to uh, to dial it in how you like to fly. I tend to like to fly deltas a bit tail heavy. I like them very, very maneuverable. But um, yeah. but in any case, yeah. And Alpha's going to be going live tonight again, right? Nine o'clock. Yep. Yeah. Nine, 9 p.m. on Eastern. Twitch. Alpha makes a Twitch. Is uh, a we'll put that link in the description as well. Uh, when this video ends so check back on the replay or head over to hobby squawk now he's got a whole thread just dedicated to the live show and then i saw somebody good question alpha is there a what's next for scale helicopters thread and i would say if there isn't you should make one uh not yeah, alpha, if there isn't person you who make asked one. go make it <laughs> we're live here we are live yep. is it no that's the mig brother oh, what? <laughs> 
<laughs> You're looking at the MiG-29. Remember, you might be able to see the product pages before anyone else. Oh, it's is it there? Fly the Gripen. I think Todd put it up. Nope. Uh, it's coming up soon. It's coming up soon. He's got the, uh, the header. Ryder X, unfortunately, you'd need to um, either email us at uh, go to motionrc.com and click on support and contact the team there to ask them specifically how we would get an aircraft to Pakistan. Unfortunately, I don't know off the top of my head uh, what the restriction should be to ship into your area, but call them and ask. If you want one, we'll do our best to get you one. Yeah. Um, and I would come from the EU. Martin Toth, the EU yeah, the price is, again, 409 uh, USD, the dollar sign. For the the euro is going to be the equivalent. You'll see that price on the European website, motionrc.eu, uh, here very, very shortly, guys. Yeah. And we hope Peter Norn, we send our regards to your wife. We're very sorry um, <laughs> that uh, your relation with your All wife wives. will be compromised. Maybe we could stick some flowers um, inside the cockpit or something in the boxes. Yeah. We feel that's bad. A, let's, let's go with that. Let's put flowers. <laughs> and hopefully they don't mind. <laughs> TJ, can David I trade Snyder, you're paper right. for a pre order? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. David no, Snyder, those days you're right. are over. The airfoil would They're be very different. Uh, the airfoil mm -hmm. would be very different when we're when we're in the model changing the CG. So um, I'm just scrolling through, just trying to hit as many questions as we can, guys. Again, we're sorry if we missed anyone, but yeah, uh, keep it, your I'll questions going in the minutes, hobby guys. squad thread as well. We'll keep this yeah, you open. Got five, five minutes, and then minutes. we're bailing. And then it's time to then it's time to bail because we're going to be getting on squawk the rest of the day and night, and you know. And again, guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, um, hit the dislike button. I don't care. Engage is is the best thing you can do, but. Um, you know, you're going to want to subscribe and definitely hit the bell for at least this show because next Friday, that's where we'll see it fly. So as long as the weather is good, you know, we're going to go. All right. The pages are on the website now. Um, we can see them up there. So go to the coming soon section. Alex, can you drop the link? Just copy the link. Off I just of did. Oh, Alpha did. There it is. Now that's how so Oh, there it is. Motion RC Collections. So it's there with the MIG. They look yeah, beautiful. Yeah, click on that link, guys. They look Your beautiful together. Our live. And they're scaled to each other. If my yeah, table was big go, enough, go, I would have had the MIG on the table with it. But uh, I only got an eight-foot table. That's not enough <laughs> for both of them. <laughs> at We're the gonna same need time. a bigger table. Uh, Miguel, this is the scheme it comes in. So if you want to make it plain gray, little primer, and you could go right over these decals. They're just water slide, like so many people do um, with any you know, free wing flight line bird or any foam bird that has that. So you can do it. Dave Kowishki. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Dave's the I'm man. I'm going to check. I think you were the first I one. Say, be he he might be peek. number one. Oh, oh, oh. Dave doesn't waste time. Man. He's got the, the credit card info saved. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's got a bat phone to, to motion RC. But, uh, you know, and regardless, guys, if you're in on this or if you're not, remember, the next one might be for you, you know, or the next one. So, you know, one thing we'll probably yep. see on social, people are going to say, oh, it wasn't what, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I'm mad. Done. Like, don't be mad. The people don't who have so many people that wanted this. And remember, that yeah. just means we just here, we're checked healthy. one off the box. And now we're going <laughs> yeah. to something else. We're getting to yours is what we're trying to say. <laughs> Because uh, we did have an Easter egg on during the MIG live that was on the back, and it was not about this aircraft. So uh, oh, man, it's, not, it it's not on, <laughs> you know, it's not here right now. But, uh, you know, go back and watch because nobody found that Easter egg. Nobody guessed it. They and it is not. Well, no, go ahead I look because everybody kept saying Battle of Britain. That's just my favorite movie that's been on the <laughs> set forever. I love Spitfires. That's a Spitfire over there. Those are not the Easter eggs. That's just me loving Spitfires. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, there's always something coming. Hit that like button, 400 guys. 400 people still in here. 400 people yeah, on this thread like and under helps. 200. Unless, I mean, you can press don't dislike. That's okay, too. Yeah, push the dislike. I, I eat either like of them for breakfast, so you're, you're welcome to <laughs> But like no, James but I mean, said, look, guys, it's all about engagement. You got to let us yeah. know what you like, what you don't like. We've got everything exactly. coming down the pipe. So uh, we we believe you. We're listening to you in Squawk, in these comments, in chat. Um, 
so we want you to know that what you have to say means something to us. So, so let us know. Show us if you what you like, what you don't like, what you love, uh, what you want, what you've pre-ordered, as a bunch of you already have. Thank you very much. Uh, and and we're listening. The more we can say. <laughs> Rider X, there's no reason to dislike. How could they? Oh, there's always a reason. <laughs> Welcome to the hobby. I'll find a reason. This is, this, they'll <laughs> find something, you know, something. But um, <laughs> Joe, Joe, no, we, we dropped the, the links. Links are live on motionrc.com. We answered all those questions. But, guys, I think this is where we're going to call it. We're 10 minutes over the usual time. Um, so uh, I'll wrap up a little bit of closing, guys. Again, if, you're, uh, if you want to check out, the replay in this is going to come live. You can head over to Hobby Squawk. Those links we're going to drop in the description of this video. Uh, the thread has been live since we announced it at the beginning. Um, the product pages, both PNP and R for at least live on motionrc.com. I'm not sure EU just yet, but uh, should be very, very soon that they are there. And uh, again, tonight, Alpha's probably going to be talking a little bit about the Gripen with people on his own Twitch, which uh, he could drop a link in there. We'll have a link in the description of this video again. And all I can say is thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope these things are exciting. They're exciting for us, and I hope they're exciting for you. I hope it's entertaining. We all love this. We all love this hobby, and um, we were so excited. The whole company was giddy to be doing these things and the interactions with all you guys. you know. And some of the people that have been joining us week in and week out, I feel like I know you, and I've never heard your voice, and I've never met you before, but I feel like we talk so much through this that it's it's really, you know, I love it. I absolutely love doing it, and, you know, if you, if you do love this, just please hit Hit that like button leave a comment on any video i'm in there interacting with you guys um alpha's on hobby squawk interacting with you guys we love engaging with the community because our community is not you know it's not small but it's not super big it's just perfect enough though that we can have this interaction with everybody so again uh thank you all so much we hope you love the uh Yas 39 gripping before you. I can't wait to fly her, so stay tuned for that. Next Friday, we're going to have uh, flying footage as long as the weather uh, is good. But stay tuned to Facebook, Instagram. I'll update you guys. As soon as I'm at the field, I'll post a picture of the plane on the runway, ready to go. And uh, then you'll know it's coming. So, guys, again, to all of you, I'm not going to call out names just at the moment. Uh, thank you all so much. Alpha, do you have any parting words? Thanks, guys. Um, it begins and ends with a thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your engagement. We're we're here. We're healthy. We hope you are as well. And uh, if you don't like this one, share the link with someone who you know does. And stay tuned for the next one. You never know yeah, when it's coming. That's it. You'll never know what's coming. All right, guys. We'll see you later. <laughs> uh, over and out.